I welcome you both here today. I think it's hugely important that you're both here uh, to give us an opportunity really to uh, evaluate what is and perhaps even more importantly what isn't working for um, for the business sector both large and small. Like I'm personally very aware of um, we we'll say from ISMI's point of view we we'll say the restart grant which is wholly unacceptable given that there's a whole tranche of people excluded from it and I would say particularly those for example in the B&B sector um, small bus operators, uh, community centres and so much more. But specifically, I would like to raise with you both um, the Sustaining Enterprise Fund and what's not working there. Um, large businesses qualifying for the Sustainable Enterprise Fund can be offered funding of up to 800,000. And yet, uh, on analysis, it would appear that throughout the entire country, there have merely been 13 applications for this source of funding. Uh, equally so, the, the grant available to the smaller um, businesses, which offers between 25 and 50,000, uh, again nationally there have been just six applications. Now something has gone seriously wrong here and uh, I'd like your, your input there in relation to that. I think, Deputy, the, the issue is, is around a fear factor. If you look at the T's and C's of the, um, of the sustaining enterprise fund, it's, to, it's uh, pitched at manufacturing mm -hmm. and tr international traded um, stuff. I, my personal read, and I can only say this from the outside again, is there's this fear factor that if we give liquidity to businesses, they're mm -hmm. going to do something naughty with it. And, and we're saying, look, folks, this is liquidity is blood for businesses and if they don't get it they die so stop tying this stuff up in loads and loads of t's and c's give people simple quick access to liquidity mm -hmm. run it through the revenue so nobody's cheating mm -hmm. and no one's doing any better but we really need to move away from what we're doing at the moment and have you communicated that directly with the um with the department yes. uh, the failures that you see yes. here okay thank you I think you know, the issue on, on that particular scheme, I think, is right. Is that it goes to the heart of what I've been saying, though. Very often, the going into this crisis, um, what we know is, both at the household level and at the firm level, cash balances have been quite strong. Mm -hmm. And the facilitation of get, keeping workers on and facilitating workers through the cash flow has been taken care of in the main by the temporary wage subsidy scheme. It mm -hmm. should have been a lot more, as I said earlier, the pandemic payment scheme is a bit of a poor substitute in breaking that relationship. And so a lot of firms actually had cash, um, and to Neil's point, want to hold on to it, to actually get into schemes as well. They need to, mm -hmm. they need to assess on reopening as mm -hmm. to what they need. And so that's it's a fear of taking on debt, but also a fear of knowing what your business model is going to be post reopening. So as a chicken and egg, we need to reopen to assess what actual take of these schemes are, are, are going to be in place. And so right now, we know the, the range of measures are correct, but we have no idea of whether it be the right scale in the right proportion to the right people. Mm -hmm. And without a reopening agenda, that's a moot point. But and Deputy, look at what the Danes have done. Rather than coming out with all these T's and C's and, mm -hmm. and just blinding people with, with all this sort of stuff that frightens businesses off from applying in, in the first place, the, first place. The, yeah. the Danish government have said, show us your losses and give, us, give them to us under signature of your auditor and then we will cover those. Now, that keeps everyone yeah. honest. Yes, I, and I appreciate that, because fundamentally, a support isn't a support unless it's a workable support, and unless it can be drawn down. And I think there's fundamental difficulties here. Um, I'm watching the time here, and I'm conscious. Um, could I just raise one other issue with you? Uh, Chambers Ireland and, and others are seeking um, a national strategy that prioritises uh, sustainable town centres. And that's everything now from transport to um, housing to obviously business as well. And I would like to ask you both, um, would you subscribe to such um, a, a, a task force? But equally so, specifically, um, I, I think our towns and our villages must be supported, particularly from an ISME point of view, you know, um, the, the very heartbeat really of our counties. So what specifically would you like to see included uh, in measures of this nature? Uh, just, uh, just for yeah. the record, in, our, in the national planning framework is, is in our submission to deliver mm -hmm. that regional investment, the new mm -hmm. 200 million euro fund that was described there, the yep. growth fund to be rolled out for, for those centres. Okay. And again, just to connect into the zeitgeist here is the Green Deal. Mm -hmm. um, so again, the remote working, the Green Deal yep. to try and rejuvenate uh, non-urban Ireland, I think here's a great opportunity for the reset and for the reimagining. Okay. 
and al align with that. I agree with that, Deputy, uh, uh, with Danny, Deputy. But here's an opportunity. I, I said at the beginning, look at this as an opportunity to fix old wrongs. Mm -hmm. uh, several parties in this house have suggested site value tax rather than the old thing under our, our current commercial rate system. So please look at that. Don't penalise a business for being in Main Street and not being out on the periphery. You know, we're meant to. The uh, Ireland 2040 plan sees intensification. Use, use the town centre, and uh, uh, site value tax would encourage that. I'm out of time, so yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you.